I am quite nervous. I don't really know what to expect and there are a lot of thoughts going around in my head and also afraid to a certain degree. Um, there's just so many unknown factors and I'm someone I really like to know what's happening in the next days. I like to have a plan. I like to have structure and now I'm here uh, on my journey to this shack or cottage. Just me alone in nature, no electricity, a few candles, no access to or no immediate access to running water. I have to go somewhere to get my water, no toilet. I have to be very mindful on how I'm going to be using my phone for filming or having phone calls with my girlfriend. I deleted all social media apps, unbrainwashing myself from all that garbage, mental garbage and bullshit that we're consuming on a daily basis. And I've been postponing this now for a while. I know it's going to help me, but this uncertainty and all the comfort from one day another that I'm going to be dropping. I'm just afraid that it's going to tilt me or that I'm going to get annoyed or whatever. I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me and I hope you find some value, some inspiration. Bear with me. My main priority was not to film in extraordinary quality. The format is probably not ideal, but I think you still get enough impressions on what I'm going through here and what I will experience. And I will also have a mentor coming from Friday to Sunday where he'll teach me or he show me how I can connect with my body better find peace and calm in even tensed and very very stressful situations how to cope and deal with my ego how to be mentally stronger but also accepting certain outcomes and just being more grounded in life even when things are not going so well i'm going to be doing this with him and i'm going to share more information in the description if you guys want to check out more and i hope you guys enjoy this journey with me oh i just arrived it is very very dark I'm gonna give you guys a quick room tour. I think that's the quickest room tour I've ever had, but I love it. That's all you need. Got a little oven here. I'm gonna make it nice and warm. I don't have any electricity here. Only these candles. Some lumber, some wood to make it nice and warm. Seating here. A drum, nice little carpet, my stuff, running shoes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And tomorrow, when it's bright, I'll show you guys a bit more of the scenery. I have to go to the next house to get me water. That's why I'm gonna be, yeah, cleaning myself. So I'm just making my first fire. Looking pretty good. Kind of proud of myself. So yeah, you see, it's um, it's very simplistic. You don't have a lot, so you gotta work it out with what is given. But I'm excited for that. I think it also makes us way more grateful for the things we take for granted in our everyday life. As you can see, I have to go for my five to ten minute walk to get running uh, to get water. I have to go in the woods or go to the house nearby to go to toilet so yeah uh, no electricity um, I have to be careful with uh, using my phone not gonna be using it a lot anyway but yeah uh, it's gonna be exciting first night is over I just got up uh, and now it's time to get some water slept pretty rough but I think it's just that I'm not used to that kind of sleep cycle going to bed at like I don't know 9 or 10 p.m. and then getting up at 8 a.m. so woke up multiple times was awake for like two hours around uh, 2 a.m. but yeah I get used to it <laughs> Und wie ist? So kalt. <lacht> oh. 
So we just returned from our tour. It's not it's a distance that I'm usually not used to. And then especially on the way back, I've had a 20 kilogram backpack. And I am telling you my back feels exactly like that. I think I will have a massive back pain. Um, but it was a great day, great experience. I've been spending a lot of time in nature. We've been doing some exercises where it's about getting to know each other in a, in a playful form. And I will essentially have three days with him. So I arrived yesterday, today was the first day. And the first day is all about calm, and resting, connecting with your inner calm, so to speak. Tomorrow we'll be dealing, coping with your shadows, bringing up your inner demons, um, shadow work. And on Sunday we return to the calm. Um, so that's the, the themes of the weekend. And then Monday, Tuesday, I have two more days for myself, just reflecting. Now the rest of the night uh, I will spend reading, journaling, having some dinner. We also bought, I did some groceries, just bought the essentials. Um, I mean, I don't have a lot of options. I can't really cook anything. I mean, I could technically store something outside and use it as a fridge, but yeah, I'm in nature. So if I leave something outside, it might be gone by tomorrow or I have to fight for it um, with a fox and with the wolves and whatever kind of animals are looking around here so but yeah I'm I think I found enough stuff nuts vegetables fruits and I'm here with a purpose to really just um, having the essentials and I'm not at the moment I'm not really missing anything with my experience from Iceland I think the things that I will crave the most or that I will miss the most at some point is probably friends friends and family I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory that I, of course, miss my girlfriend a lot. Um, especially in these moments when it's calm. But this loneliness has has a lot of advantages, in my opinion, because only this day, even though it's just the first day, I you have the time and energy and space to think about things that you would usually not think about. And it's funny because... Before I left Vienna and traveling here, I was like, yeah, I think I have my life pretty much in, in order and what else should come up. But it's it's a surprise, as always. It's, it's really magical that you suddenly start thinking about things that in your daily routines you don't really have the time to because you're just busy and distracted with shit. And then you just don't have the time and space to really think deep. So, as I said, did some groceries today. I reinvented my <laughs> luggage now to store the groceries. Uh, I have a second bag though, so it's not a big deal. Not gonna have a lot of options, right? Mostly fruits, vegetables, nuts, some protein bars. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Dinner time! Last thing I want to do right now is going outside and washing myself. It's cold as fuck. It's already frozen. You're already waiting for me. I'm really not waiting for you, my friend. Uh.
enough wood to keep it warm inside. Hopefully the wood is, has not gotten too wet yet. If it's too wet then it might be difficult to keep the fire alive. But we'll see. I'm gonna try. Lunch break, some pepper, some protein bread with avocado. I'm gonna put it on top. Some maca macaroni. Yeah, <laughs> I wish macaroni. Um, some maroni. Um, some sunflower seeds and some plums. Yeah. That's it. Wie geht's? Geil, oder? Oh, das war so weh. Ich hab meine Arme nicht mehr gespürt. Hey Ben, um, the half day is over. Mm -hmm. One and a half How days. How was right? it? When we started yesterday, so like one and a half days. Very intense. I I discovered my emotions. <laughs> I can now was able to show more emotions through my face, um, which could be can be difficult as a poker player. I'm discovering trigger points. So, which, yeah. which one? What? What do you, which trigger points do you re, do you remember the most? Well, it's it's mostly about anger, anger trigger points, right? I don't want to go too much in detail, but yeah, I think it's worth discovering it and also being okay with aggression yeah can you say something about the wolf not the wolf of wall street but the wolf uh, from the battleground yeah i mean basically regaining your animal instincts of yeah just showing aggression and aggression doesn't necessarily need to be bad right it's just as you described it's just going towards something in yeah. a very determined way and i think we have mislearned that aggression is something bad it's about it's not about violence or beating someone it's just you know pursuing something being determined going towards something having a goal uh, which which was really interesting because i also always thought that aggression is can or is very often bad but actually also per definition it's just going towards something and regaining that kind of aggression in a, in a healthy in a good way is yeah. can be very important for me is 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 like um deeply healing when, yeah, yeah. when you yeah. explore that feeling yeah. when it's not uh, the competition of win or lose it's more like the like play as a kid mm -hmm. yeah it's more like a game absolutely yeah okay Great. So I created this weapon. Actually, it's quite sharp. Look at that. You could definitely defend yourself if needed in nature. Uh, I just felt fancy to, I don't know, create something. You know, I have a lot of time, so... And I also, I think it's a good exercise to focus. Just one thing, trying to create something with your own hand. Also, created those for your fingers so you have better grip. So yeah, I'm kind of proud of myself. Let's go. Just reading through some of my notes from one of the books that I was reading. And there was one very, very inspirational, powerful message that I want to share with you. It's a German book, it's called Seelen from Veit Lindau. 
and listen carefully especially when you're not feeling well you're not happy maybe you're unsatisfied with your life or you're a bit lost whatever it is whatever kind of negative feelings or emotions if you were able to get up this morning and you're rather healthy then you're better off than the million people that won't be able to get up next week anymore if you've never been in war or in or being held in captivity or you've been um, suffered through torture or you've been exposed to famine essentially not having access to food then you're better off than 500 million people in the world if you're able to go to the church without having the fear to being threatened tortured or killed then you're better off than 30 billion people imagine this if you have food in the fridge if you have clothes on your body you have a roof over your head and you have a place to sleep you're richer than 75 percent of the people in this world if you have money on your bank account in your portemonnaie or in your wallet or wherever else then you're the but you belong to the most privileged eight percent in this world just think about this it's absolutely insane so that's that's just something i wanted to share with you because i think it's quite powerful and just reminds of reminds us of of what we actually have and what we possess and hope you guys find value in that so last day today is monday yeah we did also some exercises uh, then at the local uh, beach at a, at a lake and uh, where it was about recapping your past but uh, from the time you were born up until today where, which were the most impactful events in your life positive or negative so I was supposed to draw um, a line in the beach and I can design the line as much or in a way as I want uh, with ups and downs or circles or whatever depending on how I have been living my life at this point in time um, and then I was drawing I was supposed to draw four events so for example um, when I was five I was swallowing a, a coin which I remember very vividly and it was actually quite dangerous um, was quite critical in the hospital because the coin could have went through the um, lungs where you know where you breathe and uh, so but luckily uh, it, it went th through a position where I was able to so it, it basically smoothly went down my throat but if it would have went the other way like this way then it could have been stuck and of course it was quite I was very very scared and afraid and um, <clears throat> so so I was drawing a coin in the beach for example and uh, on the sand and and I was drawing a couple of other events that were either very uh, negative in a certain way but I also had two very positive events and then what we were doing is where that he was kind of like bringing me back into that moment and how I um, how I've experienced these events and he was talking to me as if he was a person from that time and especially for very positive moments it was actually quite impactful because um, you want to reproduce these kind of positive events right and no, don't want to get too much into detail because of course they're very private moments but yeah it was it was very interesting to see um, how how such a technique can help you to get clearance on on what you need in order to reproduce those events that had a very positive impact on me and for the negative events it was more about okay what can i learn from it what really happened how can i let go um was it really that bad or Am I just, you know, making, not making things up, but making it worse than it actually is? Um, I mean, it's not that this event when I was swallowing the coin is haunting me up until today. I mean, it was a long, long time ago. Um, but there were, of course, other events, 
you know, 10 years, 15 years, or whatever might be in your life that can definitely still haunt and haunt you until today and you might have no, have no idea of. So these kind of exercises where you have the opportunity to let go of things that happened in the past can be quite powerful. So I really enjoyed this and then we were walking back to the cottage and I was really, really exhausted at this day because usually, you know, I enjoy going for runs. I'm not this kind of like walking person or going for hikes. So that was a very challenging, because I, I like to get things done fast, right? So I'm like, if I can walk somewhere, I can also run somewhere. So that was, that was a bit of a challenge for me. And then, yeah, basically just grabbing some food and going to bed and sleep. I think I fell asleep around nine, which considering my usually sleep cycle, you can imagine how exhausted I've been. Uh, so, Saturday, we usually start around 9 a.m. Uh, we did some working on our triggers. So we had a battleground where we're simulating some, some, some fighting, but of course, um, taking into consideration each other's safety. Um, and then each of us was supposed to exit the battleground. So we're t taking some, um, some wooden stocks, st stocks in order to mark the battleground, drawing a circle, and then at any point in time, one of the um, one of us was supposed to exit the battleground and then just keep saying nasty things, like very very hurtful things that might trigger you, right? Um, so. That was very interesting because you're you're already in a, in a state of you have a lot of adrenaline because you have this fight again it's not like a hard fight it's like you push each other you grab each other you try to throw each other to the ground it's not like fist uh, throwing fists at each other it's it's a very low level of fighting but you still have a lot of adrenaline right because you you ha you cannot tell your brain it's like it's all good you're still f fighting with someone right. So you release or your body releases a lot of adrenaline, which puts you in a fight or flight or in that instance, a fight mode. So you're in this fight mode and the purpose is also to practice your, your unattention. But the purpose of this exercise is to practice also being able to be relaxed while you tensed and what I've also learned, something he taught me, that aggression is not bad, right? Aggression essentially means just going forward and working towards a goal. And that aggression itself has somewhat turned into something negative in, our, in these days, where it's actually not. Because most people, and me inclu including myself, would miscons... Uh, would confuse it with violence, right? Of course, violence is bad. I really learned to to be trying to trying to be very present and be like, okay, it's a very intense moment. And then additionally, when you fight and he, then he steps outside and he's saying all these mean things to me. And of course, the purpose of this camp is also to work on 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 stuff that triggers you in your everyday life, stuff that makes you mad, sad angry envious whatever it is right you have certain things in life that are recurring that put you in a bad state whatever kind of negative emotion it is it's like you have your luggage i have my luggage so the purpose of this camp was to kind of discover it where is it coming from how what can we do to manage it better i mean you will never be able to suppress it Neg negative emotions are part of life that's just how it is but just understanding yourself better and, and and those kind of moments also just to be still being able to relax you can you can be angry and still have a certain degree of you know being relaxed and this is very challenging even though it's a it's it's a simulation it was not real right it's it was <laughs> it felt really real so that was an interesting experience it was a physically challenging but also mentally very challenging and also a lot of body work uh, we did a lot of body work just being in your body um, expressing yourself non-verbally um, 
at least for me it's very difficult i would say i'm always trying to have my guard up you know not being able that people can see through me mm, but by doing so i'm also losing a bit of connection with people not showing like if you don't show any emotions or if you show very little emotions then you know other people might have a hard time uh, connecting with you you might not be so authentic i mean again like you might it might sounds like as if my life is a complete mess <laughs> it's definitely not like this but of course i'm just i'm just curious on when i have these moments where is it coming from and um so that's something that i just wanted to learn more about that was on the uh, in the morning and then we had a lunch break and then in the afternoon we went to a hill that was that was tough i'm telling you i was supposed to carry um a huge piece of lumber on my back uh, while going upwards and this is where I also had a bit of a re revelation when we reached the point so he told me he didn't tell me where to go he just told me just keep going and I will tell you when to stop so I was walking for like five minutes and I can tell you my entire neck everything just hurt I couldn't feel my arms anymore I just my legs because you just keeps going up and I was quite a bit of an uh, uh, elevated uh, p position that I was supposed to go and 10 meters towards a certain position he told me okay if you reach this then you're done this you go so I was about to reach and then he said nah 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 I was just kidding you're supposed to go further I was so pissed because I was already at my limits and so when you know okay I was also going a bit fast I was okay I'm now I'm gonna give everything and then he's telling me no that's not the finish line you have to continue and i was really angry i was really really angry and then he told me and this was very interesting and kind of like eye-opening well sometimes in life you can't really determine where's the end goal right where's the end of your goal sometimes you think you might reach it or you're about to reach it but then something else comes up and you have to continue going and it was actually quite powerful i mean this is just so true but yeah, it was it, because I could really feel the pain. I con could really like, yes, I made it, but then no, he didn't. So I had to continue for another five minutes. And <laughs> I'm telling, I had no idea why I, I I got this energy from, but I somehow made it to the final point. And then I was quite relieved. And I also, I had to, I, I told him uh, all sorts of inciting things um, because I just, I don't know. It just felt right to me in this moment, <laughs> um, but yeah, he did, didn't uh, take it too serious. But I was really, I was really frustrated and angry. Um, and then we reached this top with this breathtaking view over these tiny villages nearby. It was like in a movie, and we did a meditation, uh, looking into the future. What do you see? Like, what do you want to get, pull, or draw into your into your life? Where do you want to go? With whom do you want to go there? And very powerful, very inspirational, seeing your vision. And yeah, and then we were going back, heading back home. And then it was evening, grabbing some food. The next day was more about, on Sunday, it was more about finding your calm. We did a lot of stretching, a lot of body work, but also trusting your body. So I was supposed to go, um, letting myself fall while I was blindfolded uh, into s different positions. But also, you usually know that, and it might sound as a very easy exercise, but we took it a little further where he was just, like I was falling, and he just held me for like half a second. So then I kept falling, and I needed to basically fall while I was bl blindfolded, which takes a bit of time until you get until you really trust your body that nothing is going to happen, that you're going to be able to catch yourself. And it's it's not really dangerous, it's just a mindfuck, right? And being able, because very often we have these mindfucks in life where we are scared of something or we don't want to pursue or we talk ourselves into all sorts of bullshit, which essentially is the same, right? And that moment is like, no, I don't want to fall. You make a step and you try to avoid falling yourself, uh, letting yourself fall, but yeah, ultimately I was able to also fulfill or lean back to a point where I'm falling then 
he's holding me for like half a second just like giving me push and then he would release so i would keep falling and then either i was able to make a final step or i would just fall on my back or i would be able to roll up on my side and uh, so that was also quite interesting and then the final exercise was going for a sprint like running really fast while you blindfold i mean we have a lot of space here to do so so that's not a problem but you can imagine that just running straight blind also very difficult if you want to do this at home with a friend just give it a try it's definitely also a very interesting exercise where <laughs> you try to sprint but like you, you also sprint with your knees a little bit more bent forward because somehow you're telling yourself okay if you run into something at least you touch it with your knees first or your legs so you can still protect your face right so the running also looks really awkward and the first attempts i was not really running fast i could really feel that blockage but then i was able to actually funny enough once he said because you're under pressure right you're under tension he said remember that also under pressure under tension be relaxed breathe so while i was running the first 10 meters again i was not really fast i was almost walking i was just like running in a really weird way but i wasn't running really fast it was more like um, taking really high steps and then he then he just called me ben relax remember you can be relaxed while you're tense and this is where i was just able to able to let go i brought i breath or i took some very deep, deep breath and then i was running much faster that was really interesting so it's very interesting to connect with your body on a level and 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 you know face these blockages just in a def different kind of way and um, of course it's simulated but it still feels really real and of course in between always having the chance to recap give each other feedback um sharing each other or sharing certain things that bother oneself and yeah just questions about life just uh, talking about very meaningful topics or meaningful to me where you might not have the chance to do so every day because you're busy your mind is occupied so that was really really good um, it's a very simple life and I wouldn't necessarily now do it for an extended period of time let's say two weeks three weeks because at some point I get this feeling okay I have a very comfortable life at home why am I doing this but I think what is why is it so powerful and I think you should it's good to do it for a few days is that when you're at home that you just appreciate you're way more grateful for the little things that we take for granted that we're not even thinking about you know you're cold you just turn on the heat here it's so fucking cold it's below zero here the water that i'm using for washing myself is frozen in the morning so I'm in my underwear my shirt I get out of the blank it's so damn cold and it takes an hour until it's really heating up when I start the fire so it's not just you know you turn on the radiator or the AC and then you have the desired temperature within five or ten minutes it's definitely um, helpful for being more great and you all know it you know there's so much research and science on the how grateful is the main ingredients or gratefulness is the main ingredient for a happy life and if you don't really feel like when you ask yourself okay I read and I hear about yeah just be more grateful that's the shit you can do it's very practical right I know it's uh, probably more people would watch my shit when I could I would just put myself in front of the camera and be all wise ass yeah just be more grateful and everyone's like yeah he's right but how can you be more grateful and i think it's a very practical way it doesn't cost a lot of money in fact if you just grab a tent some essential you can just do it for one night go in, in, in a nearby uh, forest or wherever on a lake and just you know experience that for yourself it's so simple there's there are no excuses you appreciate having water I'm so looking forward to take a warm shower at home. It's insane. And the next days, and whenever I have a hard moment, I remember, well, you know what? I, I, have, I still have water, I have electricity, 
I have a roof over my head. I don't have such a bad life. And this is where those experiences can be incredibly powerful. And this is where everyone talks about being more grateful. If you're already a grateful person, if you're a happy life, you don't have to do that. But I think a lot of us really struggle with that. So, and sometimes I'm also caught up in, in bullshit that is just absolute dog shit. You know, I also, I have everything. I have great friends. I have the perfect girlfriend. I have a healthy family. I'm healthy. You don't need more. And this is what you are being reminded of being while you're out in nature, I think. Or at least cutting out the distractions. Because when you're here, you then start thinking about these things. And when you have an issue, let's say you really want to consider maybe quitting your job or quitting a habit or ending a relationship, you know, you have the time to think about it. You have time, okay, do I really want to do this? Yes or no? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? You think pros and cons. And I think you'll also be able to make a decision when you're stuck in life or something. Because usually what we do when we're at home is we just, the way we cope with it is just distractions, right? Watching movies, watching TV shows, eating crap, watching porn. You know, you just do all sorts of shit to distract yourself. And it's good to, to have the time here. It might also be painful because then you really have to think about it, but you will come up with solutions. This is where I would say the magic happens. Once you cut out the distractions, suddenly your mind, your brain, your spirit, however you want to call it, whatever it is it is, starts working. It's astonishing to me. Every single fucking time I've been doing this, I've come up with solutions that I never came up before. All right? Because now you sense this, everything starts working. It's not caught up with what emails you have to respond to or what meetings you're going to be missing if you're, I don't know, if you don't finish your work or whatever kind of bush or what's next YouTube video or how did the last YouTube video perform or how did this sale go or ideas for the next sale or you planning events or taxes, next call with a lawyer, you know? There's no time to find solutions for your problem. And I think that's that's one of the main benefits I personally experience. Again, this is also helping me. And I know it also has helped thousands of others. Um, not that I know personally, but you know, you read through forums and you hear stories and I've heard a lot of good things and that's why I started it. Remember, I also did a similar journey in, in Iceland where I went for like eight days, also in a cottage, which had way more luxury than it was here, but I was also isolated. Uh, apart from some sea goods um, or sea lions or whatever, however you want to call it. But it was also a great experience. I highly recommend checking this out as well. Yeah, I also have to manage my uh, battery here because I don't have electricity. So if I want to have um, electricity, then uh, I mean battery, I need to go to my host's house. I have to walk there for 10, 15 minutes to charge up my stuff and then I have to come back. So you're also going to be way more mindful at home. I'm gonna, the next time I'm going to plug my phone into the socket. I'm going to be wow, it's so cool to have that. I can just instant access to more battery, more power. And it's fascinating. I know some of you might think, wow, that's so stupid what he's talking about, but that's, that's all right. I don't care. I hope you guys find a bit of inspiration and some value in this. And again, it doesn't need to be, it can be extremer than that. It can be less extreme. You can start small, you know, maybe just sleep outside for a night without light, without electricity, you know, doesn't need to be an entire day and then see how you feel. You, know, you can also, you know, I like the cold turkey approach. Just go hardcore in it <laughs> and then see. All right, I'm out. Final moments here of my retreat or journey in northern Austria. I'm about to head back home. Luggage is packed. I'm about to be picked up, so very glad for this experience. Yeah, I think I have a good idea on where to go, what I want, who I want to be with in the next couple of months, and yeah, I, I keep doing this once or twice, at least once a, once a year. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and 
if you do something similar or if you have any kind of questions um, just feel free to drop a comment i think you'll find a bunch of cottages on airbnb or again you can just take a tent maybe even just you know um, spend some time outside your garden sleep in your garden or in your backyard or whatever um, i i guess you get the purpose of this and yeah i also got some color got some sun um, but my my lips are quite dry uh, maybe too much sun anyway looking forward to the next couple of months also excited to be back on stream playing some poker um yeah what else yeah i know that a lot of you guys are probably looking for a different type of content but i consider this also uh, as part of being a successful poker player mindset is so fundamentally important and things like this can really help you to discover your inner demons and being okay with them i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you find some value and some inspiration if you do enjoy it don't forget don't forget to like and subscribe really appreciate your support i'm gonna be checking out the comments and see what kind of questions you guys have or any kind of remarks ideas input maybe you had a similar experience or you made a similar trip feel free to drop it in the comments and then see you guys i'm out